evening. Right. I'm sorry, I will say now, I'm sorry if there's any breaking up or cackling noises. I, I don't know what's causing it. I've had a look, but I don't know what's called. All I can say, it's either the internet or the streaming app. And I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, right. I just got to alter my mic a little bit. It's too late. Right, that's better. Right, I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. I had a quiet day yesterday, just chilled out. Even though I was keeping an eye on my activities. Right. We're here tonight for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. And the update. I've got a few um little videos I want to show you. But hold on a minute, I've just got to go and get my headphones. Sorry, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Right, um, get my mouse to work now. That's it. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, what the hell is going on? Right. Right, um there's been a few updates over the weekend. None that I'm really bothered about. As well the one I, I wasn't bothered. It didn't bother me, but I don't know if I'm surprised by it or not. Right? In a way, I'm glad. It's happened, but in another way, it makes you think, why? Right? Well, let's get into it then. First of all, I'm sure I mentioned this on Saturday, how we, the PI, Heather, stepped not... She's not on retainer no more, but she's still following the case, but she's doing other cases as well. Because Seth said, like, at the moment, there's nothing they can do. They're waiting on the FBI, law enforcement, TBI, to get to him about the picture and about the video they have. Now, all I've seen all weekend is... Why aren't they telling us anything? Why aren't they telling us this? What They can't tell us. Not, they don't have to, to be honest. They don't have to tell us anything. So, it's just a, a waiting game. And we all know this can take weeks, months, for anything to come up. I know it's been over two months now. Right? But it can take longer. It can take a lot longer. I've known cases take up to two years before they've arrested anyone. You know what I mean? So, you just got to be patient. And we just got to keep getting his name and picture out there. Because from what I can understand, when Seth went down to North Carolina, no one knew about Sebastian. No one. 
So he wasn't even known. He wasn't down as missing or anything down in North Carolina. So people go, but why would you take a child who's missing to a place like the Grandfather Mountain? Right? Easily. No one knew he was missing down there. There's no news reports, there's no flyers, there was nothing. It was just by chance this woman who'd been following the case, right, had seen pictures of Sebastian, saw this lad, thought, oh my God, doesn't he look like suck and suck, took the photo. It was just pure chance. Right? And then something that came to my mind was some people saying, perhaps TBI or FBI have already got Sebastian. But they're not telling anyone because they're speaking to him. With an autistic child, you just can't go and say, oh, right, can you tell us where you've been? How you got there? You know what I mean? You can't do that. It takes time. Right? And you need specialist people to go and talk with him. So, I'm thinking, I'm, well, I'm wondering if, now this is just my opinion, my thoughts, I'm entitled to them. You know how they used to say, well, the father just say, look, whoever's got my son, just take him to a petrol station. Tell him to go inside and get him to phone 911. Uh, tell him to phone me, his dad. Tell him who he is. Phone 911. We will come and get him. Right? Has anyone thought that perhaps at the end of that visit, they could have said, right, Sebastian, go inside that building and tell him who you are. Right? Perhaps Sebastian did go in. Perhaps Sebastian did tell them who he was, and perhaps they did phone law enforcement themselves before that woman even got the photo sent into them. We don't know. Right? But if he was kidnapped or handed over, say he was handed over. They're not going to release Sebastian until they know everything. Until they know everything. And if they, if they, yes, we found Sebastian, yes, we've got him safe. That could mean whoever, if he was handed over to someone, that could, oh dear, worrying for it, we best move. And it's tipping them off. It's tipping whoever is involved in this case off. So by saying they haven't got him, by saying they are looking at video, well, not, they're not saying anything. By not saying anything, they're not tipping anyone off. If you know, if you see where I'm coming from. So there's two possibilities. Well, more than two. But one, he could have been told by whoever had him just to go inside. They jumped in the car and off they go. He goes inside. Right? And tells them who he is. And the police come. Two. To, because it's cross lines, cross state lines, it's now FBI. FBI won't tell us start all. Not a uh, Dickie Bird, will they tell us? Right? So, if they've got video, they are looking at that video, they have got to track that person, if he's got into a car, they've got to track that car. Did they get the um, tag number of the car? You know what I mean? So, but someone said at that park that it's got a... Um, one of those tag number reg uh, reg registration things, which records all the all the um, 
registration numbers as it goes as they go through. I don't know. I don't know nothing about this park. Apart from it looks really nice and it's flipping massive. So that's what we're looking at tonight. We're looking at the fact that people, whoever comes in to help Seth, whoever it is, right? Okay, we know the case, United Cage and Navy were frauds, right? Because they was asking for, we need a big tank, we need chairs. No, you don't need a big tank, and no, you don't need chairs to search, not to sit on your back sides. So that to me got me when they're saying, we need this, we need that. No, you don't. You don't. Right. So that's what turned me off with the Cajun, real United Cajun Navy. Then they backed off. All the other searches were stopped. Right. Uh, knocked divers. And another YouTuber who was going out searching backed off due to threats. Right? Now, what I didn't know, which I only just found out the weekend, mainly yesterday and today, is there is a canine dog out there searching. But she don't see no team, and she only works in small teams. I have got the um, right up on that. She only works in small teams. She doesn't tell anyone where she goes. And now they're looking. She can only do it on evenings or weekends because she is a member of the armed forces. Monday to Friday. And if anything big comes up with the armed forces, she has to put them first. So if you see her not work, if you see her, if people say, oh, she's back the way, she's back the way, she's not doing anything, it's not. Her first priority at the moment has to be her career, which is the armed forces. And then, after that, it's the search for anyone, not just for Sebastian, for anyone who needs her help. And she's not charging. No one who is working with Seth is getting one penny. No one. The only one who was getting paid was Heather. But as Seth said, because they're working on FBI and all that, there's nothing much they can do. So he's kind of released her to go and do other work because she's got a family. She's got a bring some money in somewhere, right? And it's not fair on him to hold her back, and it's not fair for Heather to sit there twiddling her fingers while doing nothing and getting paid. But she has said if and when they need her, she will be open and ready to come back. Right? She isn't giving up on Sebastian. She's just got to earn a living. By doing something, I don't know, by, by doing a job, by working over cases, right? And the, right, and the big problem we had was Seth and Chris, right? We all know what Chris is, and we all know who Seth is. Chris is a narcissist. He likes to control everything. So, Seth has got this new guy, Tony, Tony Mathis, his spokesperson. And what he's doing is doing it free of charge. And you hear about this in the, in the video I'm going to show you. Right? He's doing it free of charge. And you would like to get CP in on it as well. 
But you know, CP won't do that because CP likes the control. If he hasn't got control, he's not going to like it. He's not going to do it. Right? So it just takes the Seth and worry off Seth thing. Because Seth was out doing things in the day. And then I'm to come back and sit there and do it, going on YouTube channels, everything he could to get his son's name and picture out there. Everything. Right? And it's too much. Well, now, Seth is like 68, 70 days, coming up to 70 days. Something like that. It's, he's got to go back to work. He has to. He can't stay off work permanently. But I can assure you when he's not at work, he'll be on this case. He is not giving up on his son. Right? Anyway, so Seth is going back to work. I'm not sure if he's going back this week or next week. But he's, got, he's going back to work. So, because of his shifts, he could do nights, he could do days. You know what I mean? You don't know. So, he can't be there to do everything he's needed to do. So, Tony, speaking to Seth now for a few weeks and more, has stepped in and said, I'll do the interviews, but I'd like to get KP and CP in with it as well. We know he won't. We know CP isn't going to do that. So he's working he's working alongside Seth and he's his spokesperson. He's not killing the case. He's just stopping all this drama. Like when he does an interview, he will not mention unless Chris and Katie are in there. If Chris and Katie are in on the interview as well, then they will not mention Seth. Right? If neither of them are in the interview, none of them, then he'll talk about what he can, as long as it doesn't bring in Seth, Chris, or Katie. Right? And it sounds like he's going to be doing, setting up like one night a week where he will give updates. Because he's not just doing this case, he's got the Caleb Harris, is he? Caleb case, where that lad went missing. He's, he's, he's PR to that. So he, once a week he, he updates with father, sees what's going on there. And that's what he's going to be doing with Seth. Once a week, he'll do interviews. Right? On a certain day, at a certain time. Which I think is only right you can't go well i'll do an interview monday and i'll do an interview monday afternoon i'll do it you can't do that you have to set a day because it's pointless it's like the police coming on every day saying well we'd just like to update you that we've got no updates you know what i mean just like them coming on daily saying that and that's what tony would be saying well there's nothing to update us yet we're still waiting so once the week is enough, right, to update us on what's going on, and because it's, it's not Seth doing the interviews, Seth will do interviews. He's not stopping Seth from doing interviews. If Seth wants to do an interview, come on a YouTube channel and do an interview, he will. Right? Because we all love to hear Seth talk about Sebastian. We love that. At once, near the end. He's going down the dark path. And we didn't want that for Seth. I can understand why he was going that way. I really can. And he's trying to stay focused by saying this is for Seth. There's no me, to, no team Seth, no team Chris and KP. It's just Team Sebastian. Right? 
Now, if I said the other night, I will not. And I mean, if my, if my channel had the biggest platform going, I will not have Chris on here. Right? So, because I don't like the guy. I don't. I'll be truthful, I don't like him. And not just because of what I've heard recently, but what he said out of his own mouth weeks ago. Weeks ago. Right? I liked him from the beginning because I also thought he was controlling. He was controlling the narrative. You know what I mean? It's like if if Katie sort of like got, was getting confused in what she had to say, she'd look at Seth and then Seth would take over. And now, Katie don't talk. Full stop. And I'm worried about Katie. I want to see her in a, a video. I want to see if she's okay. You know what I mean? Do a nighttime video when he's at work. I, I think he starts work at 7 o'clock at night. So do one that comes on 8, 9 p.m. Do one then when he's not there. Just show us you're okay. That's all I want to know is that Katie is okay. So, we are going to watch a video. Which one was it? No, I was going to put on. Oh, it is one I want to show you. I'm going to start off with this. I think they're all on my Facebook page. I think it's either on my Facebook or Twitter account. They're all. Right, hello. Um, oh. Right, first of all, no, I want to show you this. Right, before I show you the video, I'd like to go over this about the woman or guy, whoever it is, who's out there with his dog. Right. Okay. Isn't this dog beautiful? Bless. Isn't that dog beautiful? Anyway, I'm going to click on here. And it's Jules Valenti. Right? Oh, God. Now, I, I knew Seth wanted a dog handler to go around the house, but I didn't know she was already working for, doing work in this case. I didn't know that. Right? Anyway, it goes. I wanted to start this morning off with a message of clarity and a little bit of hope and, and an assistance request. The K9 handler publicly posted about potentially no longer assisting in the search, I've never even heard about that one, is not me. Th that is a completely different K9 handler, handler who I've never met before. Following that comment yesterday, I have spent a good portion of my evening seemingly defending myself against questions and rude remarks resulting from certain YouTube channels, stating that I was possibly quitting. This is what annoys me. 
Why don't I check the facts? Right? Check the facts. Send them an email. Are you quitting? No. No, that isn't me. That's oh, okay. That's fine then. Right? But then again, saying that I haven't seen nothing on YouTube about or Facebook pages just about any kind of quitting. Right? First, please stop listening to those commentators. Hmm, I'd like to know which ones. I'm as extremely transparent, and unless you hear it from me directly, please don't believe it. Second, it is very hard to give 100% focus on the search efforts when I'm constantly fighting misinformation, which I totally agree. A good friend of mine and his canine are home, left our home state yesterday to head to an area of interest for a search detail. Full transparency. You'll never see me live streaming one of my canine on searches for multiple reasons. One, I'm a canine handler. My priority is handling my canine and focusing on what he, she is doing at that time. I'm not doing my job at full 100% capacity if I'm holding a phone in one hand and searching. Nothing against those who do, but handling a canine and live streaming at the same time is a lot different. Two, I prefer to keep the details of my live searches private. It is what I'm used to especially since I'm trained in fugitive apprehens apprehensions slash trailing. So she knows what she's doing. I don't know what said, what said person has access to. I don't need them knowing I'm coming for them. Thank you. They don't. My canines do have body cameras on them, just like I do but they are used to replay evidence perf for evidence purposes. This is especially important in the case of a missing child. Hypothetically speaking, if I'm live streaming and I stumble upon the individual and they are no longer living, it would be incredibly traumatising for parents to see that online. Live stream, I don't need Seth. Chris or Katie to see that if it were to be the case. Nothing against people who do this live streaming at all. I just prefer not to. And I agree. I agree totally on everything they are saying. Would you like to see your child, missing child, lying there? It's been like 68 days just lying there. No. You know what I mean? No, you wouldn't. You'd like to remember them as that's all them. I search in very, very small groups, like the picture I posted below, but usually a three to four man team. This setup is an example of how we conduct our tracking slash trailing sessions in our operations. It protects the integrity of the search keeps the canine focused, not because he's incapable of detecting, but all of my canines are dual purpose trained, which that means they are trained in protection also. So if a bad guy were to be compromised on the perimeter or being hostile towards the searcher, he or she are going to do what a protective canine does. So if it is a smaller, more controlled group, there's less of a risk. Oh, I'm going to have to come up against this woman with her dog. No way. Right, she knows what she's doing. All right. Full transparency. I'm still an AGR military status, meaning Monday to Friday. I do my duties as a company commander in the US Army. Military police, 
I oversee canine operations, anti-terrorism and force protection. On weekends slash weekend, weekday evenings, I volunteer or in some instances am contracted out under my own private canine security company. I've told Seth and all of the BTS crew I do not want a single cent for this. I, my partners and I are dedicated to searching, keep searching until Sebastian comes home. Now, given the state that the world is in, that the world is in with all these dangerous protests and other operational security breaches, there could be a possibility where I need to focus on my military duty before coming back. Make no mistake. And I want to be clear on this, shifting focus does not mean quitting. But I'm not quitting this search, because I'm not quitting this search. I have an incredibly gracious and understanding brigade command team that allowed me to work remotely while travelling around to help this family. Most of them are parents themselves. So please, if you hear of anyone saying, Julia or the K9 captain are quitting. Please put to that to rest. I am not quitting, and neither are my partners. We are dedicated to helping Seth, Chris, and Katie in bringing Sebastian home. That being said, my once assistance re- assistance request would be: if anyone, if anyone has a drone license. I have a high quality drone that I got from my security conference. I cannot operate it while handling a K9. So if anyone is serious and wants to reach out to me in regards to drone operations, please let me know. Thank you, Jules and K9 Gator. Right. Now Hi, MG. One of circles, but I had, to, I had to make it to brief, so I wanted to come in and say hi. Well, that's lovely. I hope your mum's okay. I'm on the mend. Anyway. So that's the K9. So she keeps it all private. She doesn't tell anyone where they're going. And I don't blame her. I really don't. Right? Because you tell anyone, oh, I'm going to go here to church and do a search on Saturday. You're going to have TikTokers, YouTubers, you name it. You're going to have everyone there. You're going to be followed around. You could get threats. She's not worried about the threats, by the way. She's not worried. Would you? If I was in her job, would I be worried about people making little threats? Nope. I wouldn't be. Anyway, so I thought I'd get that out of the way first. I'd just like to say hello to all those watching on X. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please consider joining and coming to YouTube and watching me. That way you can um, come into the um, chat and give me your views, your opinions. Um, What else? Oh, yeah, it was a video, wasn't it? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I want to show you this video it's only a short video don't worry don't worry it is very short it's a tiktok right tiktok now if you get offended walk away now it's about how long i don't know a couple of minutes So if you get offended, if you don't like the F-bomb or things like that, 
walk away now, please. But I, I applaud it. I really do. Right? Oh, what am I, what is going on here? So we're going to watch this. Let's get this. Why are you so upset? Why are you so upset? Because you don't fucking. And why live wouldn't it. you have your boots on the ground? Why wouldn't what do you, mean, you boots what? on the fucking ground? Oh, what? Well, honey, don't you know what that means? Oh uh, yeah. Calm your tits. It's okay. Oh, I can't wait for this to be over with, and we I find out and we get all the answers. Wait. To. Because when we do, let me ask you a question. What? When we get the answers. When? What? What? You want me to apologize to you? Listen, are you going to go public and apologize? Let me tell you something. Are you going to go public and apologize? With your mouth, it'll be a cold day in hell. What? Exactly. Until you it's tell like, me the yeah. truth and stop being a narcissistic piece of shit asshole talking to me like that. Really? Oh Dang my it. gosh, you don't listen. Why are you be yelling, honey? You. Uh, now, that's what I said the other day. It because I would have to freeze over before I apologize to him. I really would. It really would. Because I won't apologize. Not for what he says. I'm not going to apologize for talking about what has come out of his own mouth. Why should I apologize for that? Right? If I made it up and said, oh God, CP said this, this, and this, right? With no proof, with nothing to back me up, then yeah, I'd have to apologize. But we're only showing what he does, what he says, his words, his own words, nothing else. So, and I'm not sure if this was after the last video she done with him, the last phone to her, because don't forget she, um, was this the same person you did the phone call with before? Let's have a look. Um... I'm not sure. I think it was. Yeah, because she's the one who's been out every day searching. And again, she doesn't say, tell anyone where she's going. Right? Because sometimes she's on her own, sometimes she's with others. And I don't blame her. But he knows she lives local. And he's flirting with her the other week in March, but because she's kind of like knocked him back, he probably don't like it. Because she released it to the public, he doesn't like it. That's just my opinion. I don't know when this was done. I don't know if it's the same person. I think it is the same person who is doing the sweet talk to while he was lying in bed sometime in March. Right? And she didn't release it till, oh, what a month are we in now, May? So she didn't release it till April time. And he doesn't like it. But as I said, you can see his true colours in this one. In that first interview he did with the web sleuths, in this first phone call we heard of them, for two hours she sat on that phone call with him, not even longer if need be. Know what I mean? Even longer, I would say. And then this one. He did not like the fact, I think this one was after that first phone call, because he would not have liked that being put out there in public. Perhaps Katie and Chris was sleeping in separate rooms. Right? 
and perhaps Katie didn't know about that phone call. But then when she put it public, Katie's seen it on YouTube. Hmm? Think about that. So when I seen that, I'd heard about it. I'd heard about that phone call, but I could never find the clip anywhere. Couldn't find it. So. Oh, look at this. Ezra. Have you seen the screen clip to this? Honest to God, you, I'm going to play it because this is, I don't know if it's out already or what. Right, but I'm going to play it. It's a trailer. My man Ezra is lying without a net so that he could order himself a eh? ice cream, please. <laughs> the doctor who first told me my son was autistic could have saved us both a lot of time if he just said the truth. Autistic kids don't give us. Stay home. They want me to put him in a special needs school. Jenna knows I'm broke. She knows you're still not over her. The man you're in shouldn't be living with his father. He led 20 kids onto Washington Street. Your son has been a danger to himself. He's not dangerous. He's a challenge. Nobody wants to do work. Now I see where the dangerous behavior comes from. Shut up! You want to do something for your son? You get yourself to LA. Jimmy Kimmel wants to book you. They're not going to fly you. Uh, oh. Hey. What is it? Ezra, get in the car. I need to get him away from here. I'm taking the car. I'm taking him a side Thanks. pop pop. All I ever wanted was to protect our boy. Right. Your Uncle Nicky a hug, huh? Come, on, come here. Hey, hey, where are you going, kid? You know, the word autism comes from the Greek, in your own world. I don't want him in his own world. I want him in this world. That kid is the one thing that I can't get wrong. Just look him in the eye. Looking a horse in the eye, it's like sharing your soul. Where the hell are you? Taking a little time off with this. Not a good time to take off, Max. You're fighting for something. You might have to suffer consequences, but it's worth it because you did it. Because you love your kid. Dad's job is to take his son down the field. And if he gets tackled, yes. all that dad wants is for that kid to pick up the ball and to take it the rest of the way. Now, I'll put that link in the description. Because I was seeing it and I thought, and I watched it. And I'm, I'm not normally into these sort of films. I'm into the uh, action films. Blood and guts and all that. <laughs> right? But when I seen that trailer, I thought, you know, I'm going to look it up, see if it's out on Netflix yet. Yeah? But, oh my God, I've got to see that film. Some big names in there as well. So please, it highlights... And it is a child with autism, I believe. Right? What the hell is going on with my laptop? Right? It's going from large screen to small screen. Anyway, so I can't wait to see this film. And I'm sorry, if I have to, I'll block, I'll put, do, do not, I'll put my phone on silent, everything. So I can watch this film. But someone said they ought to make a film where the child is autistic. But non-verbal. Because that's different challenges as well then. Because if you've got an autistic child and he's non-verbal, that's a whole different way. Right? A lot of people I know 
who've got autistic children, learn BSL, British Sign Language. I don't know what it is in the USA, but they learn that. So that when they, and someone said, yeah, but if, they, if you teach them sign language, then they're not going to say the proper words, are they? And I said, yes, they are, because you do the sign, say for apple, and then as you do the sign for apple, you say the word apple and do the sign. So they learn the word and they learn to sign. And my grandson, who I'll talk about along here, at his school, they they learn to sign. I don't know if he's learning at the moment. He did some a few weeks ago with Braille. Right, he learned he learned to write his name in Braille. Right? Now he's not blind, but it's a good thing that he's learning it. So but they do so much with the kids, and I think sign language should be taught as a main subject in schools. Like you've got English, you've got maths. Uh, what's the other main subject you learn? I don't know. But I think sign language should be one of them. It should be compulsory, you should learn that. You know what I mean? So. Anyway, let's continue. Go to Facebook again. But this is one film I really want to see. This is a group. Right? That's the new group. Find Sebastian Rogers. Uh-huh, yes, you know. So it's got to be down here then. It's got to be. Yes. Now this is... Um, who's this now? I'm going to put it on pause a minute. When my mind working. TikTok. Right, it does talk about um, Caleb House as well. Because it's got the PR guy there, um, Tony Mathis on there. But I'm going to see if I can skip this and let's just get to here first. Hey, yeah. Andy, Andy Hayes. Safe, sort of safe space, just don't look at the comments. I don't know, actually, the comments could be nice. Caleb Harris, who you've already been working on. Yep. And so that's raised a lot of questions from people, and I figured we could just take an opportunity to uh, to give some updates on both of those cases and, and, and go through some of these questions or comments that they have. I'm I'm now the most hated man in America somehow. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right here, but here you go. No, he's not. This is what annoys me. Everyone is coming to help Seb, Seb um, Seth. Right? Everyone's turned around and said bad things. On two of them, I can agree. Right? Well, not even two from one of them, I can agree. The Asian Navy, I did not like them. I didn't think they was there for the right reason. Valdi Foundation, from what I've researched on them, they work mainly with schools. So they're being here and working and going to schools and getting his name and picture out there if that was the case, then fine. Right? But they, they backed off and don't know why. And then you've had search groups being threatened and they backed off. But 
every time someone goes to have success, <laughs> oh, thing having a PR. Well, right, I'm sorry, I think it is. Right, as you'll hear in this interview, Seth is not comfortable doing the interviews. He wasn't. Right, and at times he was getting stressed, he was angry, and he was saying the wrong things. Right. And that's why he had Tony Mathis coming and help him. So we're going to listen to this. He just cooked up Harris as well for a while, but just bear with it, okay? I have up to speed. Here you are. I have you, so it's okay. Okay, you yeah. can be safe, sort of safe space. Just don't look at the comments. I don't know. Actually, the comments could be nice. I don't know. Yeah. But um, with that being said, before we get into the questions, um, I haven't done a Caleb update in a while. Uh, is, is there anything new to report? with that that no not really i mean it's there's a we have a lot of faith in law enforcement in that case and we do believe that law enforcement has got a lot of data oh john i'm just seeing a comment should be watching on this Um, just read an article safe consultative news North Carolina law enforcement, no evidence of credible sighting. My thought is North Carolina tracked down vehicle and boy was not Sebastian from SG. Hmm. But wouldn't it not be FBI? Because it's gone across state lines. You're okay, anyway. You haven't really, you haven't really missed any. Oh, did you see the video about uh, Chris? Did you see that video? If not, I can play it again. Sheriff's consultative North. Just read article. Sheriff consultative North Carolina law enforcement. No evidence of credible sighting. My thought is new North Carolina tracked down vehicle and boy it was not Sebastian. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. If that isn't Sebastian, then he's got one hell of a double gang, a double ganga, a ganga, double ganga. Right there. So, let's see if I can find that article. Article. Some reason my my mouse is playing up. Oh, I'll get that. Let's see if I can find any new updates. So. Let's have a look. Let's see what this. Yes, MV4. Right, let's just. Oh, God's sake, this man's so annoying. Oh. Fact check. No credible leads found from photos circulating on social media. A search. All I'm saying, from what I'd say from now, right, let's see what they say. Sebastian Rogers, 15, has been missing. Well, we all know that, right? Since his disappearance, the sheriff's office has looked into items found during the search. 
including glasses and pants that turned out not to be Rogers. Now I've looked into a picture of a young boy that somewhat resembles Rogers in North Carolina that's been circulating on social media. The Sheriff's Office confirmed to WSMV4 that they've looked into the of Carolina authorities about the picture. Nothing credible has been found from their inquiries. Last week, the Sheriff's Office said there are no new updates in the search. Authorities beyond have found no signs of Sebastian, nor has he been seen on surveillance cameras. In the to say, Chief Deputy Eric Craddock said the Sheriff's Office has continuously followed up on all leads that come in. Roger's father has heard about now having him a man's missing. That's old news. The Sumner County Sheriff's Office maintains they have no evidence of foul play. <sighs> Yeah, let's listen. Launch and welcome to News 2 at 6. I'm Bob Mueller. And I'm Haley Wilgus. Our 6 p.m. show is airing earlier tonight due to the NFL draft. News 2's Caitlin Quisenberry spoke to a private investigator about where that search stands now. It's definitely, um, I would say, the biggest and the hardest case that I've ever been on. Private investigator Heather Cohen tells me she was hired by Sebastian's dad, Seth, a couple weeks ago to help find him. Cohen says even though it has been two months since Sebastian was last seen, information is still coming in. There's a lot of tips that people believe that they've seen him um, everywhere from Florida to Illinois to um, just, you know, and some people actually believe that they that they saw him that morning. As Cohen filters through the many tip calls and continues door knocking throughout the community, she says she is working independently of the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. Council said a whole lot of meeting, um, help and the investigator. Uh, we've went in and with him. Um, I attempted to uh, get the, the missing report, which uh, we weren't able to do. Um, and, and so we did have a conversation with him. And really all that we got out of that conversation was that nothing. Once busy search headquarters at the volunteer fire department in Sha Island sits quiet as the investigation continues. The last update the Sumner County Sheriff's Office had was on April 4th following search efforts saying they had nothing significant to report, but also saying, quote, we, along with many other agencies, are committed to investigating this case. The people are still praying. They're still holding out hope. They're, they're not thinking negative they're they're worried of course you know and they you know they're worried of the worst case scenario but they revert back to prayer and just hope that you know something you know someone or something comes up cohen tells me if you have a tip in the search for sebastian call the lead investigators with tbi or the sumner county sheriff's office first then give her a call those numbers are linked on our website at wkrn.com in sumner county caitlin quisenberry news two all right so that was that Right, well, we'll see. I'm still a bit dubious on that. So, I don't know, I was just a bit dubious on that. saying they've got no credible evidence. So, what did they do? Did they track? They don't say whether they tracked the lad down, whether they've spoke to him. You know what I mean? They don't say anything like that. Right? Why don't they say, look, we have 
following up the lead, we have managed to track the uh, the child who's in the pit. Got we've been shown proof that he is who he is and is not Sebastian. But just by, so by saying they've got no credible leads, just means to me they haven't been able to track the car or just means that they haven't been able to track him they haven't been able to find him so i don't know what you all think but i'm sure on twitter you have your opinions So let's get back to this. Out of their sifting through, and I think the family's very. Uh, together with, but he operates a crane in the southeast part of the country, and I sell cranes up in the northern part of the country. So not only would I not know him, but we wouldn't even cross paths like ever. So it's just a coincidence. That's all. So as far as, as, Randy's case, Randy's case, because Kayla's case, because let's go into that one first, because you know that when we get into the Sebastian Rogers case is very, very convoluted with a lot of layers. Caleb's right now is still fairly straightforward. I mean, there are layers to it, but it's it's easier. Um, is there anything like, how do I want to ask this? I'll just ask it this way. Is there any financial gain for you for working? So there is not only zero financial gain. Um, I've not, I've not taken a dollar from Randy. Randy can verify that people can reach out to Randy to verify that. Uh, my wife and I have spent money out of our pockets for me to be able to be with him in Corpus Christi. Uh, I, I am not, I'll let you ask the next question, but you know, I'll just answer it for you. I'm not taking any money from Seth. Seth has nobody on his team right now. That's getting paid anything. Um, I'm strictly a volunteer. I've been blessed in life. Uh, I'm in a good situation financially and even if they offered me money, which I don't have the skill set to back that up, I wouldn't take any money from one of these families going through this. And if I couldn't spend my own dime to to help and to be there for them, then then I wouldn't do it. And that's the same with I'm guessing the same with uh, Caleb's case as well. There's no because there's rumors out there. And, and again, I've spoken to you a lot, so I feel that I know the answer to this question, but I'll, I'll ask you anyways. Um, there's rumors that people are floating out there that you were being compensated out of the GoFundMe. That they were putting together for Caleb, and I'll just let you address that. I believe I know the answer. In fact, I do know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer. So I started the GoFundMe account with some other coworkers, and I put I put the first five hundred dollars into that account for the family. I never actually had access to the account because it was the first GoFundMe account I'd ever created. But when you create a GoFundMe account, I agree, SJ. Why haven't they? You know what I mean? No one's come forward about that lag in that photo, right? No, apparently some lag did come forward saying it was his nephew or cousin and his name was Dominic. Well, I'm sorry. I don't buy that. I would phone up and say, oh, he's my, he's my nephew. His name's this or that. You know what I mean? No. Why hasn't the mother of this child come forward? Why hasn't that child come forward? I know he's only, what, 15? Right? But he could put out a statement and not come on. Right? He could put out a statement with his mother. I'm sure. Or just his mother come forward. But there's nothing. And they're saying they've got no credible leads. Because no credible leads. They didn't get a car registration number. Somehow or another, they haven't got a registration check on their entrance. They can't have. Otherwise, that car put num car's registration number, car's tag number, would be picked up. Right? So that's just telling me they have not found the people they are looking for. They've got no credible information. That's all they're saying. They're not saying it's not Sebastian. They're not saying it is. They're just saying they've got no credible information. Which means 
that can't fall on your set. The money is basically in the cloud until you direct the account or, or the, the platform to dump into somebody's bank account. So all the way until a month or so ago, that money was in a cloud. I had no access to it. And at the point in time that Randy was ready to, to have that dumped into his account, he gave me that information. We had to go back and forth through some verification, you know, emails. And then the money. Then the money went in. So I'm glad that you're answering that. Thank you, because I know that's been a lot of something that's been floating out there and wanted to make sure that people knew that you're doing this as a volunteer, as you are. Um, your own time, your money, your take, you know, so here's what I can tell you about Tony, because obviously y'all know that we, we've spoken multiple times. You've seen me with him, um, you know, here on a TikTok a few times. Tony also has a family. Are you joking me? I'm not going to get into the details of his family, but, you know, he's working, he travels, he takes, he's taking time away from his hobbies, his family to, to do this. And I guess that leads me to the next question. Um, you know, why? You know, I know why you took Randy's. But why Seth? What what has drawn you uh, to this case? Quite honestly, I didn't want to be involved in this case because it was so muddy. Um, but we had we had some common acquaintances. Seth and I did, and without getting into a lot of that, uh, some of the acquaintances. Well, for all those joining, we are talk as you can gather. We are talking about Sebastian Rogers. Now, it's just come through, I've just been informed that, um, and I've just read the article, that apparently North Carolina law enforcement have got no credible information. Didn't tell us whether they found that lad or found a vehicle losing, it must be in a vehicle, a car, um, a bus, a coach. You know what I mean? It must be in some sort of vehicle. And I can't... F Perhaps it was on a coach. Right? Because then they don't know the names. You could give a false name to a person on the coach, can't you? But they are, it's just, in my opinion, it's just telling us they have not been able to track there's this lag in the picture down. That's all that's all it's telling me. It's not telling me no, it's not Sebastian, or yes, it is Sebastian. It's just telling me they haven't been able to find him. They've got no credible information. Exactly, SG. But I said this weeks and weeks and weeks ago near the very beginning. I said, once law enforcement go quiet, you'll get all these people coming through with the rumours and speculation. You know what I mean? So this is why I say, even if the law enforcement only come through once every two weeks or once a week and just said, look, we are still searching, we are still looking, we, are not, we have not gave up on this case. Such and such, like TBI, FBI are on this case now. They are there. And it should be FBI now because it's gone across state lines. Now, Seth hears this. I'll just say, Seth, keep your hopes up. This is Sebastian. All it tells us is they have not found the lag. They have not found the vehicle he was in. Nothing. I'm gone. Sorry. I have no idea. Oh, God's sake. I have no idea what they should say. Why is this not staying up? I have no idea what they should say that would calm the storm a little bit. You know what? I think I need to tell CP to keep his lips zipped. He's sticking up for his wife. I admit, that's commendable. I, I start, stand with him there. Right? But, to not let your wife talk, 
that's something different. And to come on, and he said it himself the other day, he, he'd come off a night shift and he'd just woken up. He had to sleep, he'd just woken up and he'd seen that YouTube channel, right, where the young girl was uh, doing the callings, the never UK girl, woman. Oh. How can they be in charge when it's gone across state lines? It's gone across state lines. That can't they can't be in charge no more. They can only be in charge with what goes on in some of your county and Tennessee. Right? But not when it goes over state lines. That's FBI. And if it's gone over state lines, it's and he's with another is with someone. Is that not kidnapping? Hard. Is that not kidnapping? Because it's gone over, over state lines. So FBI should be in on this now. This is ridiculous. Why won't FBI stand in now and say, look, this has gone over state lines. We are looking into this now. We're taking over. Hmm, not a crime yet. Well, tell me how a child, this is to some account to law enforcement, TBI, and FBI. Please explain to me how a child, or Christian child of 15 years of age, walks out the house and leaves no scent, no trail, nothing. Nothing, and I've searched a 10 mile radius. You tell me how a child could walk that far without there being some sort of interference, without there being someone else involved. And if there's someone else involved, there's a crime. Because if it's not his mum or his stepdad, and it's someone who is being in touch with, maybe who's enticed him out to meet him somewhere. I did explain how he could probably get past all them cameras. I said getting a ch alive the other week. He could have probably got past all those cameras. I don't know how, but he could have. Right? And so if he's got in another car, he's got in willingly. But they've enticed him out somehow to get him out of that house with no shoes. Oh, don't bring your phone. They can track you. But don't bring your shoes. No. Autistic children have a routine. A routine they stick to daily. And one thing Sebastian will never do, even if it meant putting slippers on, he would not go outside without his shoes. If he's going to put rubbish out to the bins or go to collect the post from the letterbox, he'd put slippers on when he was at his dad's. Don't know what he did at home? Perhaps he put his shoes on, slipped his shoes, socks and shoes on when he went out to the letterbox. Right? So, you tell me, please, we'd like, everyone would like to hear of law enforcement, TBI, FBI, how this child has gone out of that house with no scent, no trail, nothing. And this is not a crime. There is not a crime committed somewhere. Please, with one of the organisations, one of you, law enforcement, TBI or FBI, please come on TV and explain to us, stupid people here on YouTube and everyone else who's watching YouTube and watching the news updates, which is very, very little, how this could happen. Please come on and tell us.
because we are just plummet. Right? So that's, it's, that's just ridiculous. Let's continue. This that connected me with Seth and told me that he needed some guidance, some direction. Uh, uh, started about three weeks ago. About three weeks ago, he was concerned about search and rescue. So I was trying to get him set up with some search and rescue people. And then as we got to talking each and every day, it became more obvious that he wanted somebody doing his interviews. He wanted somebody helping him with interviews. He wanted somebody handling all the media and he just didn't want to do it. So what happened was I told him that if I was going to do it, I said, I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to the Harris family. If I'm going to do it to help you, I'd really like to represent all three of you because back then it was, you know, team Seth, team Sebastian. I just didn't think it would be productive to represent, you know, one side, so to speak. So, you know, we spent the next couple of weeks, uh, you know, trying to get Chris and Katie on board. And, you know, to this day, I don't know that that, that won't ultimately happen. But, you know, right now, now uh, you know, Friday, I agreed, you know, Seth finally just laid it out there and he said, look, are you going to do this for me or not? And I said, yeah, brother, I'll do it for you. Breaking up. I don't know what's causing it. It's not my internet. My internet is fine. But I'm sorry if you're getting a crackling noise or it keeps breaking up on you. I'm really sorry. I will have a look into it again tomorrow. I don't know. I'll check my... Everything can uh, and on my mic. But, you know, even now, um, I'm still doing what I can do to protect Chris and Katie. I'm still trying to keep people from, from bringing them up or saying anything malicious towards them. And, and of course, Seth, uh, we did an interview the other night and I felt like it was really clean. It was, there was no drama, which, you know, is, uh, there's a lot to be said for an interview in this case with no drama. Um, and, you know, I, the, the offer still stands with Chris and Katie. And, and quite frankly, um, you know, if we could get this family all working together, not, not just superficially, but deeply, you know, I could keep everybody from out in front of a camera and we could go back to focusing on Sebastian and, you know, I don't really care. I don't really care what anybody thinks about me. I mean, I'm just a normal guy. I don't claim to be an expert in this. I didn't ask to do this. Um, but, you know, I've got half the world out there throwing darts at me. And I'm a big boy with broad shoulders and thick skin. And if I've got people throwing arrows at me and literally creating YouTube, you know, lives to talk about me when, they, when they've never met me, that's fine. I'm okay with it. Because if they're doing that to me, they're not doing it to the family. And let's face it, those types of people, they don't care anything about Sebastian. They're never going to care anything about Sebastian. They're never going to get on the ground and help. They're never going to put any positive vibes out there for the kid. So they're going to throw arrows at somebody. It just as well be me. And if they're throwing them at me, they're not throwing them at the family. And, you know, Justin, you've dealt with those. And, you know, um, it's just part of the deal. And, and I'm okay with it. I mean, I would suggest that, <clears throat> that if somebody want to know, me and not what they've heard or what they've researched or whatever, you know, I'm an open book. You know, I, I talked to a lady today on Facebook that kind of sent me kind of an edgy message. And uh, I just picked up the phone and called her on Facebook. We had a 30 minute conversation, never met her before in my life. She was a great lady. And by the time we got off the phone, she said, you know, you're not what I thought you were. And I said, well, how would you know what I were, what I was if you, if you never talked to me? And she said, well, that's on me, but I greatly appreciate your time in the call. And, and boy, I had you wrong. Well, I I just like a chance, but if you're not willing to give me a chance, then hey, keep doing what you're doing. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. So going back to me for a second ago, I know that you've been talking to Chris and Kate. That's my opinion. I always say, like, if people are throwing stones at me, then I'm not at my children or my or anyone else in my family. You know what I mean? So. I don't care what the haters say. Let them say what But you always got to get people who are going to be against anyone coming in. For me, um, is that he Seth from doing any interviews. is not stopping Seth from doing interviews. If Seth wants to do an interview, he can. If Seth wants to do an interview, he's only there as a backup so that 
if say someone asks them a question, which he thinks I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very like F you sort of thing, then Tony he can look at Tony and Tony that's an area we're not getting into. You know what I mean? Or that's something we're not gonna talk about. Like they did in the first interview. And that someone and I said at the beginning of the interview Plus Chris and Katie was not in this interview. They would not be answering anything to do with Chris and Katie. Right? And someone puts up a comment like uh, CP threatened an old lady today. Yeah, he did. But, and Tony said, that is something we're not, look, we're not talking about. Because they weren't there to talk about that. They were to talk about Sebastian. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. That's who we're here for. We're not here for Katie or C uh, CP or... Well, I'm here for Seth as well, right? Because I do worry about Seth. I'm here for Seth. But it's not Team Seth. It's not Team Katie, Team CP. It's Team Sebastian. And that's all Seth wants. It's people out there focused on Sebastian. Not on what CP is saying. Not on what KP, Katie is Nothing like that. He just wants people focused on finding Sebastian. And with all this drama going on, poor Sebastian is being sidelined. Are they on board with you at this point? Um, help them as well? Or are they still, are you still working to get them to come around? I'm still working to get them to come around. Okay. Uh, so what, with you coming in, so somebody said something in the comments, and so I'm going to work it into the question. A lot of people like, I'll still be working in two months' time to get him to come around because CP is not going to come around because he wants control. He wants the control. He wants to know what's happening every step of the way. And if he doesn't, then he doesn't like it. And if it isn't done his way, then he doesn't like it. So you're not going to get him on board. I'm sorry you're not. Sorry, Tony. You're dealing with a narcissist and you're not going to get him on board. Uh, I agree with what you said on your other channel. The drama did keep this case in the forefront. It did. And it shouldn't be about the drama. It should be about Sebastian. Right? I said, even if we've got no information, right, I will just talk about I'll find the clips where Seth talks about Sebastian in the, on the Pascal show. I'll find all them good clips, you know what I mean? And we'll just look at them again. And we'll look at the searches that was going on at the beginning with Seb uh, Seth. You know what I mean? What JLR did with them and all that. Lot. I'll just go over them again. I do not want to be dragged into the drama. I will not be dragged into the drama. Some groups do like drama. If you want for drama, do not come here because we're not for drama. I'm not that drama. As some people say, I, well, not some people, I used to say years ago, I'm the queen bitch. Bitch. Don't mess with me because you'll come off worse. But I will not have drama. I want to talk about Sebastian, and that is it. And what happened to find Sebastian? Exactly, SG. So many people love drama. Many people love reality just because of the drama. Exactly. Right? So, no, oh, I'm going on. Oh, here. Yeah. Let's continue. Seth's Seth Rogers authenticity is I think the word that they use, but you know how he is. He's he's off the cuff. He's just 
he is he's just Seth Rogers. He is who he is. And a lot of people are drawn to that um, kind of, I don't call him a loose cannon because he's not, but he's been known to, you know, say some things kind of that you didn't expect him to. Uh, with that being said, what do you say to people who are worried about taking away that authenticity, but then also going hand in hand with that? What do you do? What are you doing to help Seth and, and Sebastian in this case? <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a cough. Um, Seth does not enjoy being on camera and that came out of his mouth, not mine. Um, I'm not trying to keep the world from Seth, but the Seth that was getting emotional and saying things that he regretted later, admittingly, he was not helping his, his own cause. And so my goal is to mitigate some of that. If, if, if we think it's good for him to be on camera, <clears throat> I'm not telling him what to say and what not to say. Uh, I did tell him to, to try to keep it clean. If he got frustrated, to be frustrated. If he broke down, it's okay. It, you know, if you feel broken, then show him that you're broke down. I mean, it's okay. Um, I just think Seth feels comfortable, a lot like Randy Harris does. He feels comfortable having somebody there that if a question's asked that he doesn't feel comfortable answering, instead of going ahead and answering that, he's got somebody there to say, you know what, we're, we're not going to talk about that right now. And, <clears throat> and I'm not a control guy at all. Uh, but I have no problem controlling a situation if I think it's going to help Seth and or Katie or Chris and or more importantly, help find Sebastian. So I'm just kind of being a mediator and, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to get in the limelight. I mean, I'm not trying to be a, a YouTube guy or a TikTok guy. I mean, I'm trying to help two dads that desperately want their kids back find their kids. And, and it's not anything other than that. I don't make money. I lose a lot of time with my family. Um, there's, there is nothing in it for me. I've never been attacked in my entire life. Like I have the past 48 hours. And I still don't know what your perception of somebody has to do with somebody that's willing to volunteer their time to help a family in need. I mean, I, I'm just lost. I don't get how people could be angry with that, but trust me, there's plenty of. This guy, Tony is only trying to help, right? And check for St. Jude's line. It's like the St. Jude's by the St. The um, landfill by That's all you mean. Is that the landfill there? Because I've got, they haven't even checked the landfill that I, I believe. I don't, I haven't heard anything. They've not checked the landfill where the domestic rubbish goes. The houses. They haven't even checked that. Why haven't I checked that landfill? Kentuck is from where all the com commercial rubbish goes, like from the uh, build uh, construction sites and things like that. So, no, you're you're you're, <coughs> you're not wrong there. Um, I think that you know there's been a lot of creators, a lot of people who have, you know, everybody basically connected with this case. And I'll just go ahead and say this. Um, I've covered a lot of true crime, starting with with Gabby Petito on social media, and I have never ever seen anything Sorry for waking up. like this Sorry. case the way that that it's being i mean the case is weird There's, it's obviously bizarre we know that there are things that just don't quite add up um but the way that people are, are really choosing teams and really going to bat and, and, and getting angry about it where as you know even i had to kind of take a step back with this and say hey look you can't be team seth you can't be team chris and katie why can't we just all come together have the common goal of finding sebastian that's that is the only team that we should have here at this point and so from that perspective, I made the decision to stop, you know, step back, not talk about Seth, not talk about Chris and Katie, and just really focus on Sebastian. But you're right, walking into this, especially now two and a half months in is where we're at. Um, it, it's brutal out there if, if you're a face associated with this particular case. And you'll find that especially if your face is ugly like mine. Okay, fair enough. I'm not I don't think I'm gonna touch that one, but um well, and so, the other thing too is one of your one of your viewers just said it in the comments, and it, it didn't really hit me until I saw that. But you know, there there are people that make a lot more money if this family is going back and forth at each other, and they'll make money a day or two going in and criticizing me and criticizing everything about me. But eventually, that money train will dry up, and if I'm the guy that stops the family drama, then I impact some people's income and there could be some people that are irritated about that but you know what it's not about your income you mean in a youtuber <clears throat> it's not about a tiktoker's income it's not about justin it's not about pascal it's not about any of the other people that i consider to be you know friends of mine it it's about the kid 
And it's not about anything but that. And, and I know it's not with you. And I know it's not with Pascal. And I know it's not with some of the other people that I trust, like Jennifer Coffedaffer. But there are some people that it's about the money. And I can tell you that the same people that are criticizing me for helping this family have made far more money over covering this family than I'll ever make because it would only take them $1 to do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one thing too, when it comes to cases like this is, you know, true crime um, obviously is, is a big, it's a very big, you know, genre as far as content creation, as far as, you know, TVs, movies, things like that. It's a massive market. And, and what I frequently like to remind people pretty much through every case is that this, as entertaining as it might be to you or as invested as you get, remember that there are real family members associated right. with, there's a real child with both of them, with both Caleb, and with Sebastian, you have two children. I mean, and obviously I know Caleb's an adult, but he's still a child to his parents. But there are two kids that are missing. He's a kid to me too, because he's like 21, 22. But they're kids and they're still missing. They still need to be found. And whatever outcome or fate that they have, whether they're found alive or, or not, then at that point, they all deserve justice. The family deserves to have answers. So just reminding people that, hey, this isn't about entertainment. It's, it's spreading awareness, trying to make sure that these names, these faces get out there and, and get found. And every missing person, every missing person deserves that. Exactly. Right. This investigation as far as checking one landfill, but not others, makes no sense. Right? Makes no sense. It's not like Sebastian could accidentally fall into some garbage container. It will be foul play if, lang if in landfill. Exactly. Why aren't they checking these landfills? That's my question, right? They say they're working this case, but what are they doing? They're waiting for that big tip-off to come in that's going to crack open this case. Right? Why don't they get off their backsides and start getting the, the warrants and whatever they need to get these landfills checked and don't just spend one day or two days check it properly you know what i mean because we're now going on 60 odd days hi truth seeker good to see you here right there's we need to spend a good few days or more at these landfills because it's it doesn't make sense. Why only check that one landfill? For them to check that landfill, and they're not, as, as SG said, you couldn't accidentally fall into one, you couldn't even fall into one of them heaps. <coughs> you couldn't. Right? <coughs> 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 He could probably climb up, maybe, right, and fall asleep in there, but they're going to find him in there. He'll be on the top if that's the case. You know what I mean? Because they were searching that construction site early morning. Right? So the workers will have found him in there. Um, they will have found him in there. They would have found him in that in the skip. So why are they going and checking the landfill? To check a landfill, you need a warrant. To have a warrant, you need probable cause. Why? I'm starting to wonder if it is true because you no, know, someone in law enforcement, the case is not being treated now. Yeah, it does make me wonder if there is. Someone said it is fake news or whatever about a family member working for law enforcement. Because I'm in the UK, it's very hard to find this information out. And I can actually phone them up and say, oh, can you tell me if such and such works here? They're not going to tell me. Well... I don't know. People aren't happy in Tennessee with the law enforcement, are they? Look at how they treated some of Moon Utah Wells. They're waiting for that 
big to conclude to break that case open, aren't they? And the same with this one. They're waiting for that big tip to come through to break this case wide, case wide open. North Carolina has said, law enforcement has said they've got no credible information. That means nothing. That just means they haven't found the vehicle he was in, the bus he was on, or anything. Just means that to me. To me, that is still Sebastian. They need to get off their backside and start looking properly. Start searching for these vehicles. You know what I mean? Surely, someone said to me they've got the tag number registration thing at the entrance as they come in or as they go out at that place. So if that is true, They've got the tag number of either the coach, the bus, the car, whatever he got onto or into. They've got that number. Track it down. If it was on a bus, find out where he got off. Track this child down. Don't just go, got no credible information. That's BS. They need to start doing their job. This is a child we are talking about. A child. Oh, it gets me so mad when... It... I get mad with our own police force over here. I really do. So, don't worry. Really, Seth, I mean, uh, Seth is... If Seth wants to have somebody speaking for him he's entitled to that it's it's not anybody's call or yeah. business if seth wanted to have some guy that was a janitor down at the convenience store talking for him if that's what he wanted then then that should be what it is and if you care anything about the father or the the child you shouldn't question why they're doing what they're doing you should let them handle the worst situation in their life the way that they see fit it, it's not our cross to bear it's not our catastrophe it's his catastrophe and it's Katie's and Chris's and it's all this family's catastrophe. And it's, it's Randy and Becky Harris's catastrophe. I mean, the way they choose to grieve, the way they choose to ask people to speak for them. I mean, if you care anything about another human, I mean, let them do what they want to do. I mean, this, this is not our child. It's just not. You're right. And so with all of that said, again, we're two and a half months into this case, you know, answer this how you want, but coming in this late in the game, what do you feel that you can do effectively with this case coming in again, two and a half months in. Well, right now, right now, what I'm doing is I'm giving Seth some peace of mind. I'm giving him some time to relax and decompress. Um, and this media thing was stressing him to the to the hilt. So, at least with Seth, you know, time will tell what I can do for the whole case. But you know, wrap your brain around what would happen if we could get everybody working together, keep everybody out of the media unless we had something united and positive to say, and get everybody focused on looking for. Sebastian, you know, that that would be my end goal. My short term goal is to help Seth do what he's asked me to do, uh, help him with a lot of this media stuff, bring him on when it when it makes sense to have him on uh, and just give him some guidance and, you know, clean things up a little bit, leave the emotion other than the sadness and a little bit of the anger, you know, towards losing his, his son, not knowing where his son is, uh, you know, bring a little bit of that on, but leave the real emotion, leave the, you know, losing your temper, leave that behind the scenes and you know, let's let's get back to delivering a message that people can get on board with. Uh, some people like the drama. Some people quit following the case because of the drama. I mean, I've got hundreds of messages that, you know, that said, hey, we quit following the case because we couldn't deal with the drama. Well, when you quit following the case, you're only hurting Sebastian. You're not hurting the parents. You're not hurting me. So let's talk about law enforcement a little bit. I know we have to handle this discussion with, with Kid Gloves. Um, how do you feel? I want to ask you I for both of the cases, how do you feel they're handling? You can insert whatever, whatever way you want. How do you feel that things are being handled regarding law enforcement and their investigation into this case? Well, you know, I mean, I, I've dealt with law enforcement with, with uh, Randy and, and Caleb's case, and I'd always like for law enforcement to have, you know, maybe a weekly meeting, maybe, you know, just general discussion about what's going on with the case. I mean, nothing that's going to impede the investigation, nothing that's going to tip their hand. 
but just some general consistent information to make people feel good about where they're at or, or are they anywhere? I mean, we don't know any of that, but that's really all I have to say about that right now, because I I'm just two days into the game. Yeah. When I, when I get to where I've got a little bit of interaction with them, I mean, I can tell you my plan is to reach out to them, gain some trust with them. And my pitch is going to be, I don't want to do anything to hurt your investigation. So when I'm doing interviews, at least for Seth or potentially for all three family members, what is it okay to talk about and what is it okay not to talk about? And if they feel like they can control some of that, then they're more likely to start communicating with the family. And that that's going to be my first angle. I think that sounds like a really great place to start. Um, as far as Caleb's case goes, though, are you able to comment on how you feel law enforcement is handling that one? I'd like more communication. Okay. But Randy does, to be fair, Randy and I are both law enforcement supporters. Randy gets a meeting every Wednesday. Um, I would like them to be a little more open with the information that they're giving him. Again, nothing specific, but, you know, hey, do you have somebody in your crosshairs? Yes, we do. Perfect. That's all we need to know. Do you have something I can take home and tell his mother that will allow her to sleep a little better at night? That's all I'm after. That's it. Nothing more specific. Speaking of, of somebody in the crosshairs, um, with this case, with Sebastian Rogers, last update we had from law enforcement, which was probably two-ish weeks ago, um, basically it was they're still searching, keep your eyes open, check your properties if you live in the area, um, but there's no real leads. There's nothing, you know, no foul play, no real leads, not a criminal investigation, et cetera. Um, other than the picture that's out there now that they've not said, you know, that is a lead. They've said that it is a lead. Um, Tony already, hold on, I'll put this up. Tony already seems to be somewhat troubled by the awful things people are saying about him. I can understand that, but he's thick-skinned enough to stay on this case. I hope he's a narcissist. <laughs> um, I hope he's a narcissist. Why? I hear that. This case is sending to so sad parents seem more bothered about in YouTube drama. Exactly. I said last night, I said, and I put it out to Seth, in case he ever does watch my YouTubes, I don't know. Because I'm only a small fish in the ocean. I'm that pebble at, at the very, 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 very bottom of the ocean. Right? But you never know, he might just come across it. As I said last night, Seth, you just got to ignore what's going on around you with all this BS being put out there. Ignore it. Do what you started to do, was look for Sebastian. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not easy, is it, Truth Seeker? So... Is, getting the uh, word out there. I'll just do this. I wasn't on last night. I just needed a break. Not from this case, but I just need to have a day off to catch up on some other things I need to do. Yeah, true. So it is hard and you, you just don't want to be dragged into all this drama. That was my one thing I said when I started this. I will not be dragged into any drama. You know what I mean? I won't have it in my chat. I won't have it. So if you, if, if you want drama, I can give you lists of groups to go to, YouTubers to go and watch. I can can give you lists of them because that's all they do all, all the time they come on a live is talk about this 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 and this and they i'm thinking why am i watching this and i'll switch off so there's only a handful of youtubers i will watch now right because of all the drama on the other channels so out of all this 
channels I've got, which I'm sub subscribed to, I watch mainly, what, four or five of them. And the only one I watch about Summer Moon Utah Wells is, believe it or not, is a Ryan Fine's truth. Ryan Fine's truth. Because he goes out there and he searches. And he got dragged into the drama. Now, he's cut himself off from that. He's literally cut himself off from a lot of channels because of that. And I still watch him because I know there's no drama on his. Right? So, I'm no truth seeker. I hate the drama. I hate it. So, and I, I don't like it when it's brought into cases like this. Right? Because it is clickbait as well yes he has left but there is another group he started up another page thing you find it on my facebook page hold on i'll see if i can find it for you it's probably down on my facebook page somewhere it's on here somewhere right but it's been a while back oh god back down right it's been a while back since i posted it but it is a new page out there yeah i like trev time he was he still posts he still posts on his youtube channel <coughs> but he's still posting on the trev time because i've seen him on other facebook pages coming up on trev time Mm-hmm. Oh, where was he? Oh, she's been found good. This is it. Right, hold on. There it is. Trevor's Substack, a forum for updates and information regarding cases of missing children, unsolved crimes, and much more. You can pay. It's quite expensive. But you can also subscribe and not pay. I agree as well, but it's like that woman who posted that picture up, right? Well, she could have caused you know, for that last year, do some harm to him. But the thing is, she given that information to law enforcement on a Saturday. The same day she took right, she emailed them. But didn't get back to her. And she's just thinking, are they, are they looking at this or not? Right? Now, what's the harm in law enforcement if they get an email of someone? Or oh, TBI, you got an email, you click on your email, oh yeah. What is wrong with hitting the reply and saying, thank you for your email. We are this. Please do not uh, release this to any social network sites. You know what I mean? That lady then will thought, okay, they've got the information, they're looking into it, I will release it. Right? But then, if saying two, three weeks, she still hasn't heard nothing about that, like, it took them over, what, over a week, about a week now, for them to come back and say they've got no credible information like that. Exactly, an automated reply can be set up. 
but they don't. And this is what gets people frustrated because they don't know if they are looking at this information or whatever. You know what I mean? And then you got Chris moaning because people won't send it. Because they don't trust the law enforcement. They don't trust law enforcement or TBI. They don't trust them to act on it, to do something about it. Now, in a way, I'm glad, in a way, she did, that her friend or whoever did post it. Because they got law enforcement off their backsides. Because then the PI at the time got in touch with both the women, the woman who posted it and the woman who took the photo. I spoke to them both. Right? TBI come back and said it was not AI generated. Got them off their backside and it got Seth, Seth, Seth got in his car once he got authentication that this was the real picture, a real picture. He got in his car to drive down there. Now, if that woman had put it on post on Facebook, would they have done anything? Hold on, let's see. Uh, what was that one? I hate to say it, but you and your listeners seem to be smart. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. yes, we are. We all are. We're all got to be smarter than law enforcement. I agree. I didn't know she had sent it in. I've been having... Oh, God, it's going again. Been having a break from the madness. Oh, what is going on? Yeah, she sent it in on the Saturday, and because I never got back to her, which is just courtesy, I just hate to say law enforcement is dumb. I don't think they would have done anything. I really don't. If she this had not been put on on a Facebook page, and um, plastic all over Facebook, all over social media. It works out all over YouTube. They would not have done nothing. That's my opinion. Right? Because look at when they went out to get them uh, those black pants. What did that law officer say? That law enforcement officer say? I'm not walking in that water. There's ticks and everything. Excuse me? They had to wait for her, his supervisor to come out. She trampled through the water, no problem. She retrieved the trousers, bagged them up and took them away. At one stage, I believe the law enforcement uh, law of, uh, officer said he wouldn't go through there unless it was a B-O-D-Y. A body. He wasn't going to walk through that water unless there was a body. How sick is that? You've got possible evidence where there's a missing child in your area. Right? When black trousers similar or even the same as the ones that were found and you won't go and collect it, that is just disgusting. Exactly. Some law enforcement, as I said, you can't treat a whole law enforcement, a whole force, just because you've got one or two stupid, lazy assholes. Pardon my French. Well, you can't treat them all the same. There are probably some really, really good law enforcement on from the county who have been out there looking. And you never force this that there's good police and there's bad police. Same over here. 
We've got good police officers. We've got crap police officers. People who shouldn't even be doing the job in my eyes. So... Anyway, we're going to carry on because I'm going to get through this, okay? But that's the new page that I put up. They're looking into it. They're investigating it. Have you heard of anything else regard that you're able to speak to, obviously? If you can't, you can't. Uh, regarding Lee or any movement in this case where they might have somebody just kind of look at them. I haven't heard anything like that, and, and I'll, I'll be straight with you, Justin. Um, yes, Heather, I'm another, another Brit. Birmingham. Scotland is such a beautiful place to live in. It really is. So... I just wish I could get to see more of it, you know what I mean? There's so much in Scotland I'd love to see. I might do one of these breaks where they go around and they stop at certain places for a day or so, like a, a tour. I might look into doing something like that because I'd like to see more of Scotland. But there's parts of England I never got to see and I'd lived there, what, 40 odd years before I moved up here. So there's part of the England I never got to see. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But let's carry on. The first couple of days, um, it's been trying to get a, a Facebook group created that we could use for resources, we could use to disseminate information. It's been, you know, trying to trying to come up with a plan and trying to come up with a oh, before I go any further, I'd just like to say, everyone, please head over to Truth Seekers YouTube and sign up. Subscribe. Show us some love. I'll put a link in my description for you. So go over and sign up for Truth Seeker. Give us some support. much and all into the case and really and truly I mean I need to know what it's okay for me to know I was law enforcement and that's what I should be sharing I don't really need to be deeply involved in the case I'll be more involved than I am today but after the first two days I'm not really that deep into the case I'm, I'm still working on setting up an interview schedule and you know getting to getting to know the personalities of the people involved and you know, it's kind of like starting any other new job. You know, you're you don't get in there and start going crazy. You start learning your co and and what everybody's personality is, and you know, you start kind of identifying how how it is you're going to move. If that makes sense, it does. We have News Nation Elizabeth Vargas tomorrow. We have Nancy Grace on Tuesday, uh, and that's the extent of what we've got. Uh, we're, we're, and we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be getting on some uh, some groups on TELF and some other people. Uh, uh, I'm going to be doing an interview at some point with Jennifer Coffendaffer, um, you know, but, but I know for a fact that Seth and I together are going to do News Nation and Nancy Grace in the next two days. I'm kind of this, but I'm going to throw this up there because somebody asked. Um, we need mainstream media to air repeatedly run Sebastian this person's case. Can you get mainstream media to pick up Sebastian's case? Okay, so I know you just mentioned a few of those. Are there plans to get any more of the, you know, obviously News Nation is is great. A lot of us who are in the true crime space will get even for the more mainstream networks, uh, you know, your Fox, CNN, you know, more local state, even more local stations in Nashville. Is there any plans or are you working on a plan to get in front of more of the national media? Because obviously, last thing I'll say here is social media is social media, but you know how this works. You can talk to a lot of people who don't do a lot of social media and they will have no clue about this case at all. So it's basically another medium to, to reach. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, uh, 
you know, quite a few media connections and simply made through Caleb Pitts. And I've had a lot of those people reach out to me. Uh, Fox and Friends is one of them. Um, you know, we're still uh, still working to uh, get on Morning America. Uh, I'd like to talk to John Walsh about his new show, but absolutely. I mean, we haven't really even begun to go out of the media yet. We're still trying to come up with a plan. Uh, the News Nation interview and the Nancy Grace interview, they just, they just fell into our lap. That's nothing that I went and did. Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a guy that's got every media on speed dial. I've got four or five major contacts, you know, through you. I mean, I've become friends with Joe Petito. Uh, he's helped a little bit, you know, push some people our way, but, uh, there's definitely plans to get some bigger, with some bigger media outlets. We've just, we've got to get our plan together and we've got to get our schedules together. And, you know, it's, uh, if we can do two or three of those interviews, utilizing. And just so you know, I would bridge um out to Joe. Joe does have John Walsh's brand. Yeah. I don't know. He you know uh good resources at least. In fact, I can tell you if you're listening to the message. So he's been very helpful. Oh Dan, I've just got to make sure this is still streaming. Yeah. Yeah, he, he enjoys doing that. We, we we can't speak highly enough about Joe. So Didn't he pop on? I think he popped on one of our TikToks in Caleb's case, right? He did. He did. And he, he likes to pop in sometimes. For all I know, he could be here now. He, he just kind of does that sometimes when he's, you know, streaming. But um, so Seth is still off work, uh, correct, at this point in time? Yes, he goes back to work next week. Okay. How, do you feel <clears throat> feeling about that? I know he's got to be, be a little stressed. Um, you know, he, uh, still looking, but he also understands his job. And unfortunately, this is the same situation that Randy Harris found himself in. He had to get back to work as well. And, you know, we're, most of us aren't in positions where if our child went missing, we could take off work forever and still have a job. And that's, that's kind of the harsh reality. Yeah, it is. Now, Regarding this case, one thing before you came on the last few weeks, Seth had been pushing a petition to try to get the FBI to take lead on this case. Um, we know that the FBI is involved. We know that the TBI is involved. We know that local police are involved. And we know that the Secret Service is involved. Um, do you know where that stands at this point? Is he still wanting FBI take lead? Is there any move there is, that you know? Again, I know you're only two days into it, so you don't know what you don't know. But, um, any movement that shows that the FBI might be interested in taking lead on this well unfortunately that's not how it works uh <clears throat> there has to be a um a multitude of, it could be three or four reasons there has to be a reason that fbi takes it over or they have a lot of reasons in caleb's case to have the fbi take charge and they're still not in charge in that case and we've got a lot of digital data that's gone to um they were still searching it just wasn't being made as public as it was are you able to speak to you know how, how are they still doing searches are you planning this is ridiculous. uh come in and basically reevaluate this area talking about you know text echo search or, or any of those types of yeah we we've <clears throat> we've got at least one search team that we're looking at bringing in um and, and i 
believe at that rate. Uh, you know, we we definitely feel like one of the missing pieces here is we have not had enough people on the ground searching. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. We we feel like there needs to be multiple search entities in here with ground and Sorry. You know, this is much different than Corpus Christi. I mean, this is an area here where you've got hundreds of thousands of acres of wooded land and private property. You know, we could have necklace searches in here and, and it would still take forever to search. So. And, and as you know, I live, maybe you don't know this, but I live in the area. Sebastian's house, like probably is like 12 minutes away from my house. So it's very, very close. And um, one thing that has been kind of problematic in this area, just so people can know, is that if there is certain properties that police and law enforcement want to get on, there are property owners out there that are refusing to let them on and search, even That's though they're missing. Child. Hey, Justin, the VR guy, uh, I'll say guy because I don't want to call him what I'd normally call him. I'm not sure. I don't know if I see it. 913. Why are you using Caleb Harris's name to get in with these missing children's families? You don't you, know. You, any, you uh, don't yeah. know. Yeah. Get up, hold on. Is he said 9th? I got to go way back. How much money are you? I mean, is, is this guy is this guy not even paying attention? I mean, you addressed all this. Well, sometimes, and for those of people who are coming in a little bit late, um, they might come in seeing it live, not realizing that they could back up and, and see all of this. I'm still trying to find the comment, but if you want to address it, I mean, please, by all means. So first off, I'm not using Caleb Harris's name to get in with the family. The family came to me. I didn't come to the family. Uh, second off, I don't know any more than, uh, yeah, that's it right there. There you go. Um, of course, I don't know any more than law enforcement does. I'm not coming on as a PI and I've made exactly zero dollars from either family. So, you know, I mean, e either you're on board to help find Sebastian or you're not. And, and stuff like that doesn't do any, any, any good to anybody. It certainly doesn't do any good to Sebastian. I, I don't know what Charlie's doing to help the case, but I'd be interested to find out. Probably. This is probably the bulk of what he does. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, there was another thing that I saw a second ago, let's, uh, I, I can't find it, but you know, it goes, it goes pretty quickly here. Here's what I'll, I'll say. Somebody's asked, like, you're not getting paid for it. You know, explain this, explain that. So what I'll say is this, we just at the beginning, and I would encourage you if you're coming in late to, to rewind this live back to the beginning and start watching it because we talk about the money aspect at the very, very front. Um, what I can tell you from this, but you see, the thing is with this, that, right, I wouldn't, if I am the PR, right, of this, I would have some over the comments, up, talking, I would have some comments over that comment section, right, and, or I will totally ignore them altogether. Because he says, is there for Sebastian? Sebastian, Tony, ignore the comments. You're going to get the haters. You always will. You'll always get haters. Uh, and I'm going back to a question. Uh, area. You lived in Aberdeen, but moved to Yorkshire. Did you move there for to be with your husband or? partner work i'm glad it was yorkshire not birmingham <laughs> yorkshire's a nice place but that's somewhere i haven't been it's yorkshire i've been i've seen on travel shows and like that but i haven't been there and all the time i lived down in england i never went to yorkshire never but it shouldn't I ignore the comments. Ignore yes, starting with Caleb comments. Harris is that he helped set up the GoFundMe and was the first donor to the GoFundMe. Um, he spends his own time, money, effort, resources to go because he doesn't live in Texas where Caleb's missing and he doesn't live in Tennessee where Sebastian is missing. He lives. It's okay. You say you live in Oklahoma, right? You said at the beginning. So you live in Oklahoma. Um, and he has to fly to these places and, and he does that out of his own pocket as well. Um, so that's what I can tell you that, that I'm aware of. 
And I can also tell you that, um, you know, he didn't come looking to, you know, to, to, to work on this case. Seth asked him to work on it. Seth felt he needed a spokesperson. I, I don't know why. I didn't speak to Seth about this. This was his decision. So I don't know what, but I would imagine the fact that um, without putting words in his mouth, that he is mentally and physically exhausted. It's been two and a half months that his kid has been missing. He's done, I don't even know how many interviews. I'd say probably hundreds at this point of interviews. And so anyways, so the whole purpose of him coming in there is basically to to help clean it up, make it look a little bit better. And, and, and I think that we can talk about his view last night. You know, he went there, you know, nice shirt on, much more composed than he, he typically is. And that's not a bad thing. And people got mad about that. So the way I see it is, you know, a lot of people who do these things, they, you know, Chris Dingman is a tell somebody, they asked him and he, he did it. And there's a lot of work and effort that goes into this kind of stuff. As creators, there's a lot of work and effort that goes into it. But as a spokesperson, you are so much deeper into the weeds. And so just, you know, please be aware of that. But let's just say this. Even if he did get paid to do it, the family did pay him, which they're not. It's still a lot of work away from his family, you know, his job, his, you know, hobbies, things that he likes to do. You know, it's his time. So that's what I'll say about that. Side. Right. No, to Birmingham. You did get moved to Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to go to Yorkshire. I find it hilarious to hear a British swear. I was at Piccadilly Circus as a team. The young people were swearing. Sounds so funny to me with accents. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'll tell you something. Yes, I'm going back years. Yes, yes. And my brother Andrew, I brought his, I think his thing. Oh, his new, not his wife, his partner at the time to come and visit. Now, we had a thing in our home, my mum says that if we wanted to smoke, we had to go into the kitchen. Right? With the back door open, shut the kitchen door, open the back door, right up outside the first thing I would stay. Well, the kitchen was also where the alcohol was kept. Right, so we were all in the kitchen one day, this one day, and his girlfriend was there, his girlfriend at the time was there. And my brother, my eldest brother, he didn't realise it. We didn't realise it. But in every sentence he spoke, it was F this or something else in it. You know what I mean? There's always a swear word. I didn't know he was doing it because he'd been doing it for so long. Right? And to be honest with you, we was all effing and blinding. <laughs> And uh, Andrew's girlfriend at the time turned around and said, I thought you told me not to, to watch what I say with my language. She said, but they're all swearing like it's no one's business. And I went, like, excuse me, who do you think we learned it all from? Right? Apparently, my brother Andrew told his girlfriend to watch what she's saying, her language. Oh, she, she's a... She swears like a trooper, a bit like me, right? And uh, he apparently told her not to swear because my mum don't like it, right? And I said, well, who do you think we all learnt it off? It wasn't my dad. It was my mum. <laughs> right? We all, I'll tell you something, we're all the same, well, I have been blind all the time. My brother does. And so, and I'm sure my younger brother does. Well, he's not than me, but he's the youngest brother. Uh, I'm sure he does. I don't know about me ever. Um, I know my auntie's sister wouldn't swear. Oh, God, no. God forbid if she swore. Right? No, no, no. But 
My mum was a swore like a trooper. Honest to God. We learnt it off our mum. So when when she said, I thought you said swear because your mum don't like it. I stood then. When I heard you say that, I said, Well, who do you think we learn it off? It's just so funny. But sounds more acceptable with it sounds more acceptable with the accent. <laughs> oh god. Cockneys will have you like that, yeah. Yeah. I love to hear the Cockneys. And the Cockneys are people from London, from a certain area of London. <laughs> she didn't know that. I had one woman in here last the other night who lives in Birmingham, where I, where I came from. But then she told me I was a yam yam. Now, I know a yam yam is not a Birmingham. It's Yam Yam is a Warhampton sort of like ran that way. And um I went, oh no, not a yam yam. And someone on here said, I've just had to Google Yam Yam. <laughs> oh god. So we all have our own we all have our own dialect yet. Yeah. So the TV showed men's pun, the dialect from to the TV show men's putting down their pants show books. I was shocked. What TV show was that? But um, no, the dialect you got different dialects and different. And when you think you cross state lines, right? In Tennessee, I don't know if they all speak the same dialect in Tennessee, right? But in, like, Birmingham comes under West Midlands. But there's different towns in West Midlands, right? So, and each town has its own di dialect. It's confusing. It's really confusing. Like I said, when I first moved up to Scotland, it took me six months, six months to understand them. They'd be talking away and I'd be going, yeah. I'd just be like one of them nogging dogs in the back of the car. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just nod and say, yeah, yeah. Don't know what the hell you're saying, but yeah. <laughs> but it took me six months to le to learn the dialect. It was unbelievable. People send me texts and I'd have to go to a friend on you. Can you tell me what that says? Because I couldn't read it because it was all in the Dundonian slang. And you'd have to they'd read it to me and I'd go, oh, okay. Flying is the other part of show name I can remember. I'm old, I forget. <laughs> Flying. Was it an English program? I'll have to look, research that. I'm going to put that down to research. Research. Flying. Oh, would that be one flew over the cuckoo nest? Okay, Heather, thank you for coming here. Good night. Would that be the one flew over the cuckoo nest? nest? Uh, SJ. So, but only I get people asking me, they have, oh, a couple of months back now, some, I was waiting in the foyer of my block for the taxi. And I was talking to the guy and he said, are you from um, Newcastle? I went, pardon? He said, you from, 
Monty Python. Uh, right, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I might even play a little clip of it on here, why not? <laughs> yeah, Monty Python be the one. So, I'll play a little clip, I'll sort some out and I'll play a little clip on here. But, anyway, this is the end of the interview, really, because I know it's got, like, in about 15 minutes or so left. But it's mainly all questions. So I'm not going to go any further with it. Um, but, Tony, a break. Give him a break. Right? He's there to help Seth. Now, if he can take the pressure off Seth by doing these interviews like this, rather than Seth having to keep doing more, right? Then, f then let him do it. Let him do it. Right? I'm just going to stop that altogether. Take it off. Let him do it, because it's helping Seth, right? Seth can kind of, he's not looking forward to going back to work, because I know his mind isn't going to be fully on the job, and his mind needs to be fully on the job. But at least by Tony being there now, he, right? And he's still got a PI on the case. He's still got one PI working on the case, right? And that new Facebook page, the setup. If you haven't joined, please do. It's, oh God, it's right up the top now. I'll find it here. Oh, come on. Find Sebastian Rogers. That's the Right, but like someone said in one of the uh, YouTube YouTube channels I was watching this morning, um, just because they're waiting on law enforcement to come back about this picture, it doesn't mean we've got to stop everything else. There's still searches going on. There's still flyers need to be handed out. You know. People still need to get his name and his picture out there. Because Seth said himself on the way down to North Carolina, every stop he made, he handed out the flyer. When he got there, he wasn't allowed to see the video, but he knew that. So he was handing out flyers. No one knew about Sebastian being missing. It needs to go nationwide, and not just three minutes or whatever. It needs to be a good, what, five, ten minutes long, so they can talk about Sebastian, talk what he's like. Oh, there was something I wanted to show you, and it's on my Facebook page, I'm sure. No, it isn't. It's on, it's on this one. I think it's on this one. Go off. Get off. See these two videos of him. Uh, I'm just trying to find it now. I'm sure it's on this one. And now uh, released. Booming at it. Blooming attic, and um, she put them on YouTube for us. But they are on here somewhere. There it is. Hold on. Let's go back.
Look at the energy in that lad. And there was a comment on here which I really liked. Right? Hang on, I'll see if I can find it. Oh, come on. Oh, put all comments. But the guy put up a comment saying something happy, and when he comes home, he's going to buy him the season ticket and he's going to take him. Take him and buy him as much popcorn, candy floss, whatever he wants. But right, but I just love those two videos. The energy in him. I put a comment and I said, my my grandson would get on. Brilliant of him because my my grandson would be like sort of like jumping up there, yeah. You know what I mean? And he's got so much energy, just like Sebastian. He drunk around all day with Sebastian. He really would. He drunk around with Sebastian from the time they woke up to the time they dropped off on their beds. Just to show I'm in the UK. But we'll get him home. We're going to bring him home. As I said, that article. Right. Let's see. This, uh, let's have a look. I'm going to take my head off. Right. It says, fact check from photos circulating on social media as search continues for Sebastian Rogers. So they've had no credible leaks, which means they didn't find the vehicle he got into. Which I find really hard to believe. Come on, they must have seen him into some vehicle or a bus or a coach somewhere. Right? But like I said, if you put on a coach, if they had gone out for a day trip and they was on a coach, they need to track down where that coach went, took him, where he got off, right, because all coaches have video cameras, uh, cameras, well, let's do if they haven't, so they know when he was getting off, and then they can track him from there, <coughs> that <coughs> Telling me it's got um, well, fucking hell. It's just telling me they've got no information from that photo. You know what I mean? They haven't got any more information. So please, law enforcement, North Carolina, Sumner County, whoever, start doing your research. Find the vehicle he got into. He must be in a vehicle to have got into that park. 
Bitcar, Five Wheeler, Trailer, um, Coach, Bus, Find It. No credible leads found from the photo. So all those, all that, all those video cameras that was at that park, you didn't find, you found something because you told them not to let uh, Seth see any of the videos. You found something. Right? And it won't surprise me if in a couple of weeks someone releases something from one of those videos. It, it would not surprise me if someone leaks something from those videos. So, the search continues, and I think, I hope, I'm hoping it continues. Exactly, at least tell us it's, yeah. They've not said it's not Sebastian. You know what I mean? You know, come on, everyone has said this. If that was my son, if all these people on the Facebook pages, on on Instagram, on YouTube, all these thousands of people have seen this picture. There's got to be someone who knows that woman. I don't think she's with Sebastian, right? But she may have recognised him. She may have remembered him. She may not. You know what I mean? She was looking down. She may not have seen him. Because he's coming one way, she's going another. But someone must have seen this and think, hold on, that's my grandson, or that's my nephew. <coughs> got, <coughs> got a with the mother and said, do you know your son's pictures? picture is all over Facebook? Do you know they're talking about this picture all over YouTube? In the crime community. I won't say all over YouTube because it's only in the true crime community is being shown. Right? But no one has come forward. Apart from this lad who said he's his nephew or something and his name I mean, is well, that don't play, play with me. That does not play with me. A smell test. Smells icky. It doesn't smell. Does not smell right. Does not pass the smell detector test, as some people say. So, I think they need, I think that might have just been just an update without saying anything else. By saying uh, no Craig bleeds found from photo, from photo. Not video. Right? So they're saying that from that photo they've had no video leads, no video, and we know they had video because they wouldn't let Seth see it. Because they even told the staff do not release this video to anyone else. Seth wasn't even allowed to see this video. So there must be something on there they don't want Seth seeing. So, say there's no credible leads from that photo, I think is BS. Because from that photo, they got you off your backside, law enforcement, everyone else off their backside, and got the video proof that that lad was there. So if there's no credible leads, why won't you let us, why won't you let Seth see the video? If there's no credible leads, that's the question. No credible leads, so why not let? Oh. I wonder if they purposely are doing drips of info because every time something comes out, CP blows and talks. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because they decided that no creative book leads found the photo. I'm sorry, you got a video of this lad. So that's not a credible lead. You got video of this lad at that park. That's a credible lead. So to stand stay state, you have no credible leads. Yep. They say photo but not video are the words the key. Yeah. But from that photo, if they hadn't seen that photo, they wouldn't have had the video. So what I'm saying is, they're saying there's no credible leads. It obviously is because you got a video from that from seeing that photo. You went there and got the video of this lad. Video that you will not show Seth or Katie. Right? You won't show anyone. So they cannot state there's no credible lead because there is there's that video. But they're not talking about the video, they're talking about the photo. I think they want people to stop sharing that photo. They want people to stop sharing that photo. Well, I'm sorry, but until... Right, fair enough. You want people to stop sharing that photo? Is that what you're trying to do? There. I'm sharing it. And until we get positive proof that this is not Sebastian, until you can come back and say you've spoken to the mother of this child, you've seen his birth certificate, You've seen his schooling, where he goes to school. You've spoke to his teachers. <coughs> yes, a mission of word video may be very important. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because they haven't said video, they just said... I suppose I've got to take this back down now. Ugh. They've just said no credible leads found from photo. Yes, it was. You had that video. So that's a credible lead. So don't come with your BS because we know you had a video of that lad at that park. Now that's a credible lead. And if it wasn't for that photo, you would not have had that video. So don't try and make us to be thick as thick, you know what I mean? Because we're not. We can read your words. No credible leads found from that. Get stuffed. When you can tell me you spoke to the mother, you spoke to his school, you got confirmation that this lad is the lad that goes to his school and is going there for years and years. Yeah. Yeah, this article was there. Yeah, yeah it was there after whatever well, the press conference. Well I'm not I'm not buying it. I am not buying that. I want them to come up and say, we've spoken to the mother, we've checked his school, we've seen his birth certificate, you know what I mean, check with his, like I say, yeah, here he is, his birth certificate, here he is, yeah, check with his school, see how long he's been going, and if that is a child that goes to that school, they know, they know who he is, check with his school, check, find the mother. Get the birth certificate. Get DNA. You cannot repute DNA. It's not. Then DNA will solve it all. Will stop all of this. Get DNA. Find this mother. Find this lad. And get DNA. 
D and I will put this to rest one way or the other. So law enforcement, TBI, FBI, stop doing your job. Find this boy. I will not stop sharing that photo until I get definite proof that by DNA, DNA, that this flag is not Sebastian. Find the mother, find the child. Get off your backsides and start earning your wage. And I can say this because I live in the UK. Right, you may not like what I say, but I say how I feel, my opinions. And my opinions is, you're feeding us BS. You've fed us this little bit of information. Some people may believe it, but I read between the lines. I read the words. And that tells me it's BS. I'd like deception to have access to law enforcement. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, because he works for law enforcement. He, he works with law enforcement. See, like, you know, if they've got a witness, uh, a suspect, he's the sort of guy they call in to work with them to tell them if they're being deceptive or not. Without having to do a, the uh, polygraph, he would be able to tell them if they're being deceptive or not. So, but that is BS, no credible leads for one photo. Well, you got a video? Credible lead. Anyway, I've been on here nearly three hours, two hours, 45, 46 minutes. I've got to go and tell me, make me tally. So, I'm going to say thank you. Everyone hung here who's being in, come and comment it. Yeah, he would. But hasn't he done a video? Hasn't he done one on them yet? I'm sure he has. You know what I mean, but I won't, sh I don't want to show that on here because I don't want to focus on the negative. I want to focus on the positive. I want to focus on the bastion. So I will show videos of when Seth is talking about Sebastian. Right? I love that because I used to, when I heard him talking about Sebastian, I thought, sounds like he's talking like my grandson. You know what I mean? And I loved it when you talked about Sebastian. Things he loved to do, what he liked, where he liked to go. You know what I mean? I love that. So I would rather have a repeat of that than have all this negative stuff on there about like KP and CP. Because CP, I've got no time. I haven't got the time of day for. I really haven't. I haven't got the time of day for. All I want to know is to see Katie on a video. I'm alive, video call, right, to make sure she's okay. That's all I want to see. Because we have not seen hide your hair ever since she did that last interview. Apart from her putting up that comment about the photo. But then Chris could have put that photo comment up. But thank you again for being here. I really appreciate you all. Please like and if you really want, hit the bell for notifications. Subscribe and hit that bell. Yes, I want proof of life of Katie, please. Proof of life. Thank you, SG. So that's what I'm waiting as proof of life for Katie. Because he says she's not coming on live because everyone's having a go at her. I'm sorry, but she was the last person with that lad. We just want her to tell us the truth. Because she isn't telling the truth. She needs to start talking and telling the truth. 
but until then, just want a proof of life, and not a picture, a video call. So please, anyone in touch with CP, get them to do a video and have a chat about Sebastian and have Katie talking about Sebastian so that we can see Katie's going that she's knocked dead up or knocked out somewhere in the corner, tied up. You know what I mean? Gagged. You know what I mean? You just want proof of life to know that she's okay. So anyway, I'm going to say good night. And I'm going to go out with this again. Okay, so thanks for being here, everyone. And good night.